This is a short video on how to take a gynaecology ultrasound history. My name is Dr Johnson and I'm a gynaecologist from Southampton. Some reports are pretty basic and this is an example of a patient who was 36 with menorrhagia which was the only clinical information given to the sonographer. The pelvic scan showed everything was normal. But a report can be so much more. You need to take a history, look up previous results, take your images and interpret the images in the light of the clinical details, generate an impression and suggested management. There are five basic questions I ask of every patient. The presenting complaint, I need some more detail about that. And then I ask when was the last period and have they had abnormal bleeding? What contraception does she use? Is there any pain? And has she had previous surgery, especially appendix, caesarean or ovarian cysts? There are different scenarios that would make you ask some more detailed questions. These five scenarios will go through one at a time. Abnormal bleeding in a premenopausal woman. I'd like to know, are her periods regular or irregular? Are they heavy? By which I mean, are there clots and flooding? Is there any intermenstrual or postcoital bleeding? Are the periods painful? Is she using any hormone treatment or what contraception, like being on the pill, implant, coil or barrier? Are her smears up to date? In the scenario of pelvic pain, I want to know where is your pain? When does it start? Is it related to the menstrual cycle? Is it constant or intermittent? What sort of pain is it? Is it sharp, dull, colicky, burning? What makes it worse, like intercourse or opening her bowels? And what makes it better? In the scenario of postmenopausal bleeding, when did your period stop? Are you using HRT? And if yes, what kind? Continuous combined, cyclical, estrogen only? Have you used tamoxifen in the past? Have your breasts been sore prior to the bleeding? This indicates likely late ovarian activity. Has the bleeding been caused by anything like coughing or straining? This indicates possible atrophy. And are your smears up to date or were they normal in the past? In the scenario of subfertility, how long have you been trying for a pregnancy? What previous pregnancies have you had, including the length of gestation and whether you had a caesarean section, ERPC, that's evacuation of retained products of conception, or any terminations? Is the cycle regular? Has there been abnormal bleeding? Do you have pain? In the scenario of early pregnancy, when did your last period start? Is the cycle regular? Was this a planned pregnancy? Have you had any previous pregnancies with the outcome? Are there any risk factors for an ectopic pregnancy like chlamydia, pelvic inflammatory disease, coil, previous ectopic or tubal surgery? Have you got pain, bleeding? And are there any previous tests in this pregnancy like an HCG level or an ultrasound? Then look up the previous results. Look at previous scans, both the report and images. Look up the letters from the outpatients or hospital admission and look up results, CA125 level, HCG, haemoglobin, depending on the scenario. Next we'll do the scan. It's a scan of the pelvis, which you can do transabdominally and or transvaginally. Depending on the scenario, you usually start the scan transvaginally with an empty bladder. But if there's a history of fibroids or pelvic mass, you might start transabdominally with a comfortably full bladder and then repeat the scan transvaginally with an empty bladder. Only perform the trans a transabdominal scan, not transvaginal, if the patient is Virgo intacta, if she's never had intercourse, if she's young, or if she does not consent for a TV scan. Do your scan systematically, but also look for tenderness and the location of tenderness, which is called site-specific tenderness, and look for pelvic mobility, including the sliding sign in the pouch of Douglas. Then your report can contain your history, the pelvic ultrasound findings, and an impression, including diagnosis and management plan. If you suspect a malignancy, you need to add to the report in bold, important, abnormal result, urgent action required, and send that urgently to the requesting physician and phone them to make sure they received the report. 
So the history we had in our patient at the beginning was she was 36 and had heavy periods. When you asked her more questions, in this case, she had heavy periods which did not respond to methanamic acid or tranexamic acid. The bleeding is irregular. She started bleeding seven days ago, does not use contraception, has had some low pelvic pain, but no previous surgery and no previous investigations. On our scan, we saw that the uterus looked normal. The endometrium had a thickness of 12 millimetres, but that's not normal for somebody on day seven of their cycle. Looking more carefully at this, there was a central lesion with a feeder vessel, likely to be a benign looking endometrial polyp. The ovaries looked normal, there was no masses or free fluid, no tenderness, and pelvic mobility was normal. So the original report looked like this, not that informative. But our new report looks like this, with an impression of an endometrial polyp and a suggestion to refer the patient to the menstrual disorders clinic. So a report is only as good as the interpretation that goes with it. History, examination, report and diagnosis with suggested management. And it's very important to look up the outcome later to see if you were right. Thank you.